Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for connecting to NDB Bank's Investor Webinar to discuss financial performance for quarter 2023. Today's webinar will follow the same format like our prior webinars, where the bank's director and chief executive officer, Mr. Dimash Telemiratna, will take you through a prepared presentation. At the end of that, he will open the forum for questions and answers. Participants are please requested to use the chat option to post your questions. Participants are also kindly requested to remain mute with camera switched off throughout the presentation, including the Q&A. On those notes, let me now hand over to the CEO. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. Welcome to the NDB uh, Investor Webinar that we do every quarter after the release of our results. So this is to discuss about our nine months performance uh, ending 30th uh, September 2023. Uh, so with me, I have a senior leadership team uh, who will join me later as panelists. Uh, so we have been all to the CEO, Sanjay, Senior Vice President, Personal Banking, Sue Anthony, CFO, Miran, who's a uh, Vice President Treasury, Indica, the Vice President Business Banking, Shani, Vice President Project Finance, and Lucian, Vice President Branch Product Management. So let me uh, go into the uh, details. Uh, the agenda basically covering the operating environment that we have been working on, uh, and also the financial performance for the three quarters and the way forward, and then we'll be having the Question and answer session as usual. So the operating environment, of course, very volatile, but I think gradually we are improving from where it was last year. Last year was very volatile, but gradually we are settling down. Uh, so as you can see, uh, one key element is the inflation. How the inflation has come down from uh, very high level of about 73% in CPI to now 1%. Uh, of course, at a higher base, but, but there are significant changes there. We had a modest recovery in economic activities, uh, as denoted by the leading economic data. Uh, of course, these are supported by certain import restrictions, uh, but more important, the inflation, uh, that is the key. Uh, area that uh, Tom has been targeting and that has seen an improvement with that, the interest rates, etc. Uh, and uh, with regard to the IMF relief package, we expect in the second tranche, uh, I think the staff level agreement has been reached and most likely once the board clears from 6th of December, we should get that. And that would also unlock some other uh, lines that have been agreed with some of the bilateral lenders. So that could also come in, hopefully uh, uh, improving on the uh, foreign currency in the country. Uh, as I mentioned, inflation has significantly reduced, but there can be one of increase uh, in the coming months uh, with the VAT rates going up to 18%. Uh, but in terms of external sector performance, the other areas that you need to uh, share uh, the steady improvement in the work remittance side and also the tourism income. Uh, up to October, we had $4.9 billion uh, in terms of work remittances. And even uh, uh, October, we have crossed 500 billion, and even the expectations for November is also 550. So that's a steady uh, flow that is helping in terms of managing foreign currency inflows. And the tourism side also, the earnings up to October have been $1.6 billion, and that is growing. And that's a feedback that we get from our uh, tourism sector related customers as well. Uh, gross official reserves have uh, reached some healthy level. Uh, officially, it's $3.6 billion. And we have seen the exchange rate stable in the last quarter, managing between 325 to 330 level. Uh, of course, uh, this is about roughly uh, appreciation of 11% from the beginning of the uh, 2023. Uh, in terms of policy rates, uh, there had been a significant reduction during the year. 
uh, and of course, including the uh, this month, uh, actually earlier uh, last week, uh, the reduction in uh, monetary policy rate by another hundred basis point. So all in all, uh, we have seen. Uh, you see that the policy rates, how it has uh, grown from September 2021 itself uh, during the one year period. Uh, so from around 5% uh, to uh, they peaked at uh, by uh, June this year, uh, it peaked at uh, six and a half. So all in all about 10.5% uh, increase in the policy rates. So we peaked up to 16 and a half. But since then, a uh, significant reduction, including the recent rate cut, it has now come down. So all, all in all, about 6.5% uh, or 650 basis point reduction in the policy rates itself uh, from that high peak uh, of 16.5. Uh, uh, and that is reflected in the market rates uh, uh, in terms of the bills, uh, which has peaked at 29% uh, uh, one year bills have now come down to 13%. Uh, and then uh, AWPLR, that's where the significant reduction we saw uh, from a high of 28.19% last year. Now it has come down to uh, 13.94 uh, earlier this earlier previously it was 13.14 uh, again a significant reduction uh, so this itself showed that AP, AWPLR itself uh, had about 15 percent uh, reduction of 50 uh, or 150 base uh, sorry 1500 basis point reduction the AWPLR itself during this year and uh, uh, that's one thing that uh, uh, bank and sector had seen, and also that is what uh, regulator is also keen to see a reduction in the lending rates. So along with the AWPLR, uh, there had been uh, uh, regulatory driven uh, measures to ensure that the uh, overall interest rates are reduced significantly. So we have seen uh, roughly about 250 basis point reduction in the last two months ending uh, October, and uh, further reductions are expected so that the benefit is passed on to the customers. Naturally, they still have some pressure on the NIM or the net interest margins of the bank, but we need to ensure that the, when the economy is revived, that benefit is passed on so that the credit growth can be uh, basically uh, improved based on those tools. Let me, so that's the operating environment, and let me now go into the financial performance of uh, NDB Bank and the group. Uh, overall, we had uh, gross income uh, growing up by 38% year on year to 102.9 billion. Uh, bank profit before tax, uh, we had a significant improvement here overall, 1,100% uh, or actually tenfold increase in profit before tax to cross 9.5 billion from the previous. Uh, uh, last year's nine months. So that's very significant. And also profit target tax, we ended up in, uh, with 5.2 billion, which is 829% growth year on year. Uh, group level profit uh, before tax also crossed 10 billion, which is uh, about 763% seven, growth and profit after tax 5.4 billion. In terms of uh, total assets or balance sheet, uh, of course, we saw balance sheet uh, shrinking by 5%. This is mainly due to the exchange uh, improvement, uh, actually the appreciation of Sri Lankan rupees. So we uh, closed the September balance sheet at 789 billion. Uh, in terms of loans, uh, as, uh, again, 13% drop, mainly due to uh, the exchange uh, impact. Uh, we closed at 473 billion. And also deposits, again, a 7% reduction, again, driven by uh, the uh, dollar, uh, app, uh, actually rupee appreciation, uh, because about 28% of our deposits are in foreign currency overall. So as a result, because of the appreciation, uh, the overall deposits uh, had seen 7% negative growth. Uh, despite the balance sheet uh, being reduced, 
Of course, the profitability side, I've uh, gone to emphasize that is where we have been focusing on the interest margins and also the fee based income. So, all that has contributed to a significantly higher profit before tax and also profit after tax. In terms of uh, net interest margin, we uh, nine months it was 4%, uh, a slight improvement from 3.8% uh, last year, ROE 9.75%, cost income ratio, one of the lowest in the industry, 30.2%, and the impact stage 3 ratio at 9.18. In terms of the capital adequacy, uh, tier 1 is at 11%, and the total capital at 14.46%. Uh, Going to the detailed uh, financial performance in terms of uh, income, income statement, you would see the gross income uh, had 38% growth year on year. And uh, even the interest income, 44% growth from 65 billion to 93. Uh, however, the interest expenses, uh, the growth is 61%, naturally because of the initial high rates uh, the one I mentioned earlier, the significant increases in the interest rates, so along with that, we had to increase our deposit interest rate. So as a result, the interest expenses had a higher growth than the uh, interest income percentage growth. So we had 61% uh, expenses growth, uh, purely due to uh, the interest rate hikes that have been happening. But that is expected to come down with the rates coming down gradually. So we see that uh, our repricing rate is very high. I think most of the deposits are short term. So that's one advantage that the bank is having uh, as and when the rates are coming down, the repricing rate is uh, much faster. So as a result, the reduction in net interest expenses would be faster than uh, what is expected. So all in all, the net interest income, we had 10% uh, growth from 22 billion to 24 billion, uh, nine months uh, in that uh, September. In terms of uh, non-fund uh, based income, there again, uh, we had a significant improvement in the uh, fee and commission income. That is something that we have been consciously driving uh, in a, in a uh, low margin uh, scenario, the fee based income as one of the key area. So that has grown by uh, over a billion rupees uh, year on year from 4.3 billion to 5.4 billion. Uh, the other non-fund based income, uh, there's a drop in the exchange, uh, the exchange fluctuation from 4.9 to 3.7. And the total non-fund based income uh, almost remain as 9.3 because of the exchange impact. There was no growth, but the area that within the control of the bank, we had uh, good growth uh, in terms of fee based income. Uh, so, uh, moving on to the uh, uh, impairment charge, and this is where uh, we had a significant uh, impact uh, compared to last year. That uh, overall reduction, 37% uh, reduction in total impairment charges from last year, nine months, we had uh, 22 billion uh, impairments taken. Uh, now that has come down to 13.9 uh, or 14 billion. Uh, so that's a significant reduction compared to last year. Last year, it was mainly driven by uh, the impairments over the assets, especially the ISP investments, uh, SLDB investments, etc. Uh, now, the SLDBs, uh, the bank received that in uh, rupees, uh, and there had been a certain reversal of provisions as well there. Uh, but more importantly, the overall, uh, we have been consciously building up the impairments even for the loan group. But as a quantum, there's a significant reduction, about 8 billion uh, from last uh, last year, nine months to this year, nine months. In terms of uh, uh, impairment uh, related ratio, the KPIs uh, on the quality of the book, uh, impaired loans ratio from last year, it was a uh, state's ratio was 6.2%, which has now gone up to 9.18, uh, basically reflecting the uh, industry-wide uh, credit uh, concerns. Uh, we believe that the peak has reached uh, so that hopefully things should improve from now onwards. Of course, some of the sectors in the economy are performing, actually getting back to the normalcy, but still there are sectors, there is a lag effect. Uh, naturally, when a, a country has gone through a 
almost 10 percent plus negative growth rate over the last one and a half years. Of course, some industries are picking up, for example, the tourism, but there are industries which have a lag effect. So the impact of those still would remain in, uh, and that might get reflected in the impaired loan ratio. But all in all, we see, we hope that if the peak has reached and things are improving from now onwards, we also have done things to work on the recovery side, the remedial management side to ensure that this uh, acute uh, challenge is uh, managed well. Uh, impairment cover, uh, that remains almost the same, 36.57%. Uh, uh, and the total impairment cover on the loan book, uh, that has actually improved from 5.8 to 8%. And then the net operating income, uh, we had 112% uh, growth, uh, resulting in $19.7 for the nine months. Uh, in terms of managing operating expenses, I think that's where the bank has done very well. Uh, despite the high inflation rates that we talked about of about say 65, 70%, I think our overall operating expenses, the growth is only 20% from 8.4 billion to 10.1 billion. Uh, personal expenses, of course, 17% increase. Uh, however, uh, we have managed to uh, keep it at 20% level. Uh, total operating expense increase, uh, mainly due to the inflationary driven uh, uh, expenses, uh, the fuel and energy costs. Naturally, there were several price divisions that you are all aware. So those are the main reasons why the cost has gone up. But still, uh, in terms of cost income ratio, 30.2%, uh, uh, I think compares very well with the peers. I think one of the best cost income ratio that NDB has recorded even in this quarter. So uh, all in all, the uh, operating profit before tax uh, significant increase from 790 million uh, for the nine months in that September last year, that's gone up to 9.5 billion. Uh, that's why I said it's more than 10 times uh, growth. Uh, it's thousand one hundred nine percent growth. Uh, taxes, of course, again uh, naturally the subset of that. So two point four billion taxes. So profit before tax uh, about seven billion. Uh, after income tax expenses, the profit for the period uh, after tax was five point two billion, compared to five hundred sixty one million that we had in the first nine months. So again, eightfold increase in uh, profit after tax. Uh, of course, the total tax charge, substantial increase from uh, either 228 million last year, nine months, uh, to 4.3 billion. Uh, so uh, overall, the profit before taxes uh, at the group level, uh, almost 10 billion uh, compared to 1.1 billion last year. And uh, profit uh, for the whole, uh, nine months uh, profit after tax at the group level it was 5.4 billion. Uh, this uh, on the below that we are given uh, the movement in the regulatory tax regime. So as you can see, a substantial increase in the tax rates. Of course, the FS that remains at 18, but the income tax level from 24 to 30%, and the SSCL, which was introduced at uh, 2.5. So total tax last year, the tax, uh, total tax rate was, I think the tax rate was about 42%, which has not gone up, now gone up to 50.5%. So whatever the bank earned, 50.5% basically is paid out as tax. Uh, so uh, let's share that information on the tax rates. Uh, moving on to the balance sheet. Uh, as I mentioned, the balance sheet has a, uh, had a negative growth rate of roughly 5% from 833 billion in December last year to 789, mainly due to uh, the uh, appreciation of the Sri Lankan rupee against dollars because uh, as you can see uh, the below uh, tables, you can see that the currency wise, uh, we roughly about 23% uh, of our uh, loan book is in dollars and even 29% of our deposit book is in dollars. So in the balance sheet, uh, our foreign currency, uh, when I say dollars, it's a foreign currency exposures. It's a mix of currencies, uh, but uh, it's a foreign currency exposure is high. So 
when the rupee appreciates, uh, naturally the rupee terms, the size of the balance sheet uh, has come down. Uh, in terms of uh, gross loans, again, it's 580 billion versus uh, it's, it's close at 514 billion. Uh, apart from the uh, apart from from the uh, <coughs> rupee appreciation, uh, we were also uh, not consciously growing the book, uh, especially in high interest rates. It was very challenging to grow the book. So the first half, we have been uh, allowing uh, the normal uh, attrition of the loan book uh, without making any effort uh, in terms of growing the book. Only a certain selected uh, products were. Uh, we were concentrating, uh, but the things are now improving uh, so that they, since the economy is also picking up, we expect the economy the growth rate also to be uh, positive uh, next year. So as a result, we have been paying attention now from the uh, second half onwards to uh, consciously grow the asset book. But in the first half, it has been a conscious uh, uh, degrowth kind of a approach that we had uh, given the high interest rate regime and also customers were also not sure about their future arrangement as well and with a little credit appetite, which was reflected in the banking sector overall. Again, bank sector also the asset uh, or the loan book growth. There was a big growth in the first half. Only the last three months we see a uh, month-on-month increase and we see a similar trend in our loan book in the from the last month onwards. Uh, deposits again uh, about seven percent drop. Main reason again is since uh, uh, twenty nine percent of our deposits are in foreign currency. The appreciation in the Sri Lankan rupee uh, contributed to the uh, drop in deposits. Uh, so that's about uh, some summary on the balance sheet. Uh, these are some of the investor ratios. Of course, the share price has improved uh, more than double. From December level, December it was 32 rupees. Now, uh, as of September end, that has closed at 68.70 rupees. Earnings per share has improved from 7.65 to 16.52, uh, more than double. Uh, ROE again more than double from 4.75% last year to 9.75%. And this should improve further. Uh, return on assets, uh, pre tax level uh, from 0.26. Uh, to 1.5, uh, and also the book value of the share from 167 rupees to 100, almost 180 rupees. In terms of price earning and all, it remains the same. Price to book value has improved from uh, roughly 0.2% uh, to times to uh, 0 0.4. Uh, so these are some of the investor ratios. Uh, and in terms of uh, capital adequacy, I think the uh, bank has uh, performed well. Uh, these are all through internal generated capital and also uh, conscious balance sheet management, uh, moving on to uh, more capital efficient assets. And in terms of our pricing also, we have used uh, RORAC pricing retail risk on research adjusted capital base as a measure so that whatever the exposure that we book, we have been uh, very conscious on capital efficiency management so as a result, you would see the common equity ratio tier one has improved from 9.34% uh, to 11% uh, 11 uh, by quarter, uh, quarter uh, three. Uh, at the group level, we have 11.54% uh, capital uh, in terms of tier one. Uh, in terms of uh, total capital ratio, again, uh, more than 100 basis point increase in uh, total capital. The minimum requirement uh, is 12.5. We are at 4.46%. And at group level, it is 14.87%. Uh, uh, Strategy liquid, liquid asset ratios are at very high, very uh, healthy level. Uh, we, again, that has improved uh, from 27% last year, while the minimum required is 20. We are now around 38%. Uh, I think in terms of uh, liquidity, almost all the banks have uh, very high liquid ratios. Uh, liquidity coverage ratio uh, again uh, 333 percent and uh, quite high liquidity. Next table funding ratio also at 141.66, whereas the minimum is 100. So banks are the NDB is quite liquid here, uh, and uh, the graphs depict how their capital adequacy ratios have moved. 
uh, and how that has improved from the December level uh, from uh, 13.35 to 14.46 and the tier one from 9.34 to 11.06. So you'll see that the 11.06, the tier one level is uh, one of the highest that have been at tier one level we have been maintaining since 2020. Uh, so over a period of uh, uh, three years, one of the highest tier one capital ratio again, thanks to uh, balance sheet management uh, and also the internal capital retention that we did. So over the last three years, I think we have averaged uh, one of the best uh, tier one ratios. Uh, in terms of uh, LCR, again, you would see that uh, how the liquidity level from 2020 level, 157 percent of the LCR ratio, uh, total currency, uh, it has gone up to uh, 270 percent. So again, uh, quite liquid in terms of uh, over a period of three years also. I think during times of trouble, the liquidity and capital are the key things that uh, banks would concentrate. And uh, we have been concentrating on that to ensure that we come out with a very strong balance sheet and a highly liquid situation. So you would see that three years, uh, how the capital ratios have improved and also the liquidity ratios. So moving on the way forward, responsive and agile. Yes, we went through turbulent time, but as a responsive and agile bank, how do you meet the uh, future? So uh, some of the, our key strategic priorities for the next two years that uh, we have internally discussed and uh, uh, some of them are the one is managing the NIM, net interest margin in a, especially in a declining low interest rate environment that is coming. How, how do we manage our net interest margin? So we have been focusing on that to improve on our margins. Then the fee based income, again, uh, area that we had seen quite a good uh, results, as you saw, a 1 billion increase year on year. Uh, and we would continue to focus on that, on the fee-based uh, income, so that that will enhance our revenue mix. Uh, and also another key uh, imperative is on the asset quality and continuous focus on ensuring that the asset quality improves and also the impairments on those will be reduced and uh, the stage three position is addressed. So that's where a lot of efforts being made uh, in terms of uh, strengthening the recovery team in terms of improving our legal capabilities in recovery wherever needed. And that's where some of the positive developments in the legal uh, framework has also helped. Uh, so, and apart from that, uh, how we incentivize our recovery officers, all that have been looked at so that I think the, uh, in terms of future, the concentration on this, the focus approach would ensure that uh, more uh, efforts are made uh, to ensure that our impairments are managed and the recovery side, the asset quality improves. Uh, we also have set up a uh, remedial management unit, which is uh, uh, proactively looking at potential future uh, stage three accounts early, nurture them, uh, take intensive care of them, and, and ensure that the bank's position and the customer is also looked after well by having some very experienced RMs managing that. So that has also helped us to improve on the asset quality. Uh, in terms of uh, loan growth, growth in going forward, it would be a cautious loan growth uh, with uh, sufficient lending, as I mentioned, based on the RORAC, return on research, uh, return adjusted capital. How you, whatever we book, uh, we always ensure that underwriting standards are high and also whatever we book is capital efficient. Uh, the other, other area that we are concentrating is on the cost rationalization and especially uh, getting the, reaping the dividends on our digital investments. Uh, we went for a co-banking upgrade, which is now operating from January onwards this year. So there are a lot more that we can get in terms of efficiency through the digital investments that we have made. So cost rationalization, when I say that, it's basically how we can get the best optimum results from this digital investment. And we have seen quite a good growth there. The, the digital transactions have gone up to about 85%. But that's a lot, lot more we can do. Uh, though, uh, I mean, banks' number of transactions over the last five years more than tripled. 
we are not increased uh, our headcount by that much. Actually, that's thanks to the digital investment that we have made, workflow in, uh, uh, improvements, uh, the investment in the robotic processes and all. All those automations have helped us to be uh, one, one of the most cost-efficient bank uh, in, in Sri Lanka. Uh, and we will continue to drive our digital focus, uh, empowering women, uh, women market uh, focus, that is one of the key areas that in Lidia has been focusing, uh, and the ESG-related initiatives, those should continue uh, to have a balanced approach in whatever we do, it's all sustainable. And uh, in terms of uh, preserving capital, especially on the tier two side, uh, uh, we have already made announcements and uh, so far good positive response for our Basel three compliant tier two listed uh, unsecured uh, subordinate redeemable debenture issue of 5 billion. Uh, so we have made the announcement that book building process is happening and the issue is opening on 5th of December. Uh, and uh, these are the features, uh, the total AER at 15%. Uh, there are two types, uh, one uh, giving annual returns, interest payment annually. Uh, so that's AER at 15%. And the type B is again five-year tenor. Uh, quarterly interest is paid. So AER at, uh, again, interest rate uh, quarterly is 14.22%. Again, AER as 15. So that would also improve our tier two uh, total capital ratio once that is finalized. Uh, so that's basically uh, the update and about the way forward. And we are quite happy to uh, take on any Q&A. So please feel free to share your questions, uh, put it in the portal here, and uh, we would uh, uh, read the question and also provide answers. And that's where myself and my team would uh, uh, come in to share whatever our thoughts on your questions. So over to you to raise your questions. Okay, uh, so there's one question, I'll take that and maybe the second uh, one, uh, Niran, on the uh, for the interest rates area in 2024, but I'll take for the first one, that is, uh, can you explain the proposed changes to the single borrower limit? and how that will impact the smaller banks. What is NDB strategy with the changes? So I think this is uh, yet to come, but Central Bank has uh, shared uh, paper uh, with the banks for our views, and most likely that would be effective from mid of uh, next year. Uh, we have the single borrower limit, which was earlier linked to the uh, uh, total uh, capital, uh, and went up to about 30, 32% based on either group borrowings or the single borrow limit. Now that is getting reduced to the tier one capital and also at 25%. So that's a significant reduction in overall banks' uh, single borrow exposure. And where the groups are also uh, defined, there are more uh, uh, conservative kind of approach. Uh, so therefore, yes, uh, there'll be exposures uh, over, a, uh, over the current single borrow limit. So some of the groups might get affected. So there is a time frame of uh, almost three years. Uh, that's uh, what has been indicated and been agreed to ensure this is uh, uh, implemented. However, yes, there will be an impact, uh, especially for the smaller banks. Uh, and on the other hand, there may be uh, single borrow exposures of the larger mm -hmm. banks still are getting affected. Everybody is getting affected. It doesn't matter whether you are a smaller bank or a larger bank, but that also create an opportunity for some of those who are not banking with larger groups, when uh, when some banks' uh, exposure caps are reached, an opportunity to basically be part of that by getting into that group, but it's up to a conglomerate or a group to see whether rationalizing the number of banks. I'm sure some of them didn't want to bank with uh, several banks. Uh, so any, any corporate would also like to be uh, working with about three, four optimum level of banks. So that's something uh, that one has to manage. But yes, that would create some impact going forward uh, to the in industry. So we have shared our views with the central bank. Uh, Niran, will you take this question about, comment a bit about how you see the rates behaving in 2024? <laughs> Uh, we think that uh, there's still uh, room for the interest market interest rates to come down because if you look at the policy rates and with the recent reduction also uh, in the last policy meeting, 
I think the market rates have not yet adjusted to that level, even to the previous rate cuts. So we, what we feel is that, as CEO mentioned earlier, with the, uh, if once the IMF uh, board approval is received on the 6th of December, it's very likely that, and also the committed uh, funds from uh, the ADB and the World Bank, which will also, which will actually, as uh, which will actually wipe out the shortfall in the market. So that will also signals the government and the central bank also to, uh, to be more more restrictive in their market borrowing, come uh, borrowings. So that it's where the pressure will be somewhat ease off to the market, and we feel that the rates uh, will get uh, adjusted down much more much faster than how it, we saw it in 2023. Thanks, Rahul. Another question: uh, How has the dollar liquidity been in the recent month? Uh, you can add on, Iran. Uh, of course, we have seen quite a uh, good liquidity level. I think, for that matter, uh, almost all the banks, I believe, are highly liquid in terms of dollars. One reason is that uh, okay, uh, appetite for lending is also low, but more importantly, the import controls that are in place as well. However, all in all, I think dollar liquidity wise, uh, I think the uh, entire bank sector is quite positive, and so are NDB. I think I don't want to add anything. But yes, I think, as you? you said, yes, uh, I think the markets are quite surplus in US dollars. One of the main reasons is the, uh, the low credit appetite. And at the same time, I think, uh, or even all our correspondent banks and the other, um, uh, other respective foreign banks also have extended their. Uh, uh, bank limits, interbank limits to all the local banks right now. So those limits are also available. Uh, so for uh, so because of that, the market activity also has come to almost to a normal uh, normal uh, levels uh, to the pre uh, economic crisis situation. So because of that, the dollar liquidity is fairly strong in the local market right now. Just a question on uh, what is the expectation on NIM on uh, FNK Smiling going forward? Uh, I don't know how to give yeah, if you, yeah, I think overall uh, banks, all the banks in the market have shown a very high interest rate. Uh, NIMS recorded, uh, where we say there are a few banks which are at very, very high levels also. That is to be expected because of the number one is the high yielding assets in the, in the, in the, in the early part of the year. And also the uh, and 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 now it's actually uh, with the high cost of funds also easing off. Many banks have shown some high interest rates. Yes, but we expect it to come. Uh, I mean, like to gradually come down. But some of the banks who have recorded uh, relatively lower interest rates might move marginally up. But overall, I we feel that uh, in the range of around four to five percent names could be uh, could be a level which. We expect it to be in the market. Thanks. Last question: uh, Can you comment a bit about what is happening in relation to the debt optimizations negotiations, especially in relation to the potential timelines? Uh, I wish I have a proper answer for that. Uh, I think the negotiations are ongoing. I think the banking sector also has presented uh, our proposal to the. Uh, government uh, appointed uh, debt uh, structuring agent. Uh, so there are discussions happening. Uh, I think everybody's uh, expectation is good to get this finalized soon uh, rather than get dragging on. Uh, we saw Zambia, the uh, I think the structuring proposal, I think what last moment uh, got, got delayed again. So we don't want that kind of a situation for Sri Lanka. So I think everybody's expectation is to get that sorted soon uh, and then uh, there's a question Iran probably you can take this uh, has the central bank coordinated activity in both the foreign exchange and government securities market is there more volatility as a result uh, considering the foreign exchange market I think uh, mainly uh, they are a net buyer because they do the correcting by uh, where whenever there is a market surplus they buy and then to build up the reserves. Because I think there has been like some sales happened in the October to mainly to manage the, the some of the banks, uh, SLDB positions, especially the state banks and all that. 
But right now, I think they are in the correct path again by buying dollars now, even during the last couple of weeks. We saw them uh, in the market, but obviously they don't sell because they want to safeguard the reserves. I think it's, but it has not brought in any uh, any volatility as such because uh, they uh, what what happens is that actually uh, if there is they see a surplus in the market, then they come and absorb it. So that rightfully is the correct thing to do. Regarding the regarding the interest rates, of course, I think we haven't seen uh, any 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 kind of a uh, intervention or any kind of a. Uh, uh, buying or selling from their side. Uh, it's basically the demand and supply in the market. Okay, thanks, Randy. There's one question, what's the expected impairment percentage for next year? Uh, again, uh, very difficult to uh, provide, uh, uh, I mean, direct answer, but I the way the things are improving, uh, and also the way that the banks have built up our impairment. Now, impairment is also two types. One, impairment related to the investment portfolio and the impairment related to the lending portfolio. So, in terms of impairment related to uh, investments, the investment in uh, SLDBs, I think that has been taken care of now. Uh, bank has been building provisions on that, but that got reversed also with the uh, uh, assets being replaced uh, with the uh, rupee bonds. Uh, so there's a day one impact again. Uh, but in terms of the in, uh, sovereign bonds, uh, we have been building up our impairments and all in line with uh, the market. Uh, we have been providing quite a substantial figure on that and uh, all in line with the market. So in case uh, uh, the uh, optimization happens soon, uh, and based on the way that these are treated, uh, there can be impairment reversals as well. Uh, so, but very difficult to comment without knowing uh, what the, the optimization, that what the structuring program would be. So that is why as a conservative uh, bank, I mean, the entire industry has been building adequate provisions in line with the industry standards and also in line with the consultation with uh, CA Sri Lanka. <laughs> Uh, so we have been building. So it's a very conservative impairment building that has been happening. So moment uh, the structuring is announced, I think then that we know that what could be the, the positive or, or further impact, unlikely or further impact, but uh, we would know about that. In terms of loan impairments, I think a bank have been building quite a substantial impairments here. And there is a quite a big reserve that is built up. But once you start, uh, already we are started in terms of the recovery, and that's where that pool can be used, the impairment can be used as a means of negotiating solutions with the customers. And that's where the point I mentioned earlier in terms of legal uh, legal uh, framework, also there have been some uh, uh, landmark case also, which uh, recently concluded uh, on the how the third party mortgages and all are now, uh, uh, can be uh, used for the recovery effort. So these are some positive developments. So uh, as a result, uh, in terms of loan impairments, I would say, uh, since we have seen the probably the highest level, maybe a little bit of addition, but I think the downside uh, in terms of the release of provision going forward, probably from next year, when the economy picks up, uh, and once it related to the right sectors where the credit is deployed, I think we can see some uh, reductions in the astral impairments. There's a question about is there a possibility of uh, cash dividend payment in next year or still regulated restrictions apply? So if you want to come in, the regulated restrictions are still there. Think, yeah, the regulated restrictions remain and of course we will evaluate and uh, based on industry and based on our profitability, we will take the necessary decisions with the relevant board approvals. Uh, there is a question on, do you believe economic growth in 2024 will result in trade balance of payment deficit? And we all view on the exchange rate as at in 2024. A lot of treasury related questions, so I'll, <laughs> I'll pass it on to uh, uh, Niran. What I feel is that uh, I think this trade uh, gap I mean, like it will get narrowed. I think uh, it should continue, even though the almost all the import restrictions have been taken off. 
but uh, still we haven't seen a huge demand from that side. But at the same time, uh, we have seen a slight decline in the export sector, mainly driven from the uh, uh, garments side. But other sides are, we have seen some growth and also the worker remittances and the tourism is, is, is picking up. So with that, what we feel is that the better, balance of payments, I think uh, we might even post a surplus, but trade, and at the same time, then the trade gap should narrow over, over, over the next, over the, over the 2024 as well. So, which can lead to a uh, exchange rate, uh, I mean, like, to a, for a stable level. We, of course, sincerely hope that the exchange rate can appreciate a bit, because I think that will really benefit the country and the people also. So, we don't expect much of a depreciation and and probably a very stable level as of the current level should maintain over the year. Thanks, Ryan. That's question on uh, probably Sanjay, you can take this. How is credit card spending and personal loan applications in recent months? Yeah, the credit card spending has slightly increased, uh, especially during the season, of course, taking uh, advantage of the discounts. Uh, and uh, expecting uh, consumers, expecting the bonuses to come in and get settling. Uh, we've seen the seasonal increases, uh, spikes uh, on and off. Uh, in terms of the personal loan applications, uh, there is no huge demand. Uh, of course, from the bank side also, there are more stringent uh, underwriting standards uh, with the uh, net uh, the tax uh, increases, I think the net take-home pay has come down. Uh, therefore, the, bank, uh, the applications are also coming down due to that uh, restriction. Thanks. That's a question probably Vinoj uh, can take this. What explains the growth in fee and commission income by such a large amount? So I will narrow that down to the improving economic activities and our, that's been one of our focused areas. I think that we have seen in the last nine months the improving economic activities is driving the imports also in a way i think if you compare to the last previous year and also ntp always been a very strong it's a trade bank which is strong very strong in trade and that's one of our focus area so that i would narrow it down to those two reasons for the improving trade and commission thanks so uh actually these are the questions do you have any other questions uh, <laughs> Okay. So these are the questions that we have received. I think we have uh, provided all the clarifications. Uh, so uh, did that I conclude the uh, webinar. Uh, thank you very much for taking part uh, and uh, the opportunity to share our numbers as well. And uh, of course, we had to close the year well. Uh, so we'll ensure that there's not another one more month to go. Uh, so that we will close the year well and uh, pave the foundation for a good growth going forward from next year onwards. So with that, thank you very much for taking part in our investor update and uh, thank you for your questions. And with that, we'll conclude the uh, investor update. Thank you.